Greetings, guitar friends. Today, I want to take you on a journey. A journey that starts with a young Mike Torrin. Okay, a younger Mike Torrin. Surfing the internet, um, stumbling onto a YouTube channel, uh, Brad Ango, who was building guitars um, for kids. So I watched the process. I'm like, you know, I can do this. This, this looks pretty cool. Let me try this. I'm a handy guy. So did some research. I uh, went to Solo Guitars, bought a kit, bought a tele kit, and um, here's the process that started me down that spiral. So there I was, got a new box of parts, got a body and neck, um, opened it up, and started looking at the components. And any true gear nut takes a look at the components and goes, you know what, I'll bet you I can upgrade that. So here I am looking at the tuners, and I'm going, yeah, those look pretty cool, but no. Took a look at neck pickup. It was kind of small. You know, I think this should be really bigger. Took a look at the bridge pickup and goes, you know, again, I'll bet you I could better, get a better bridge pickup. Um, control plate. Bridge. Just not a bad bridge, but it's gone anyway. And then, uh, yeah, that. And pretty soon, you know, I had a, I had a body, I had a neck. And I had an empty box of parts. Um, so the neck that came with uh, the kit was actually pretty good. Um, wasn't finished, so I needed to still finish it. Um, it wasn't bad. Just one thing I learned about the whole process is, you know, I'm pretty particular now about what frets they use, and these weren't the frets for me. So this guy also got the boot, and I ended up with this. So here is. Uh, Here's the body. This is the only thing that came out of the kit was the body. So spalted maple top. It's a beautiful top. There's a little bit of, I haven't finished it. This is the other sad thing about it is I built this thing. I played this thing, bought the paint, did everything that I was supposed to do to get this thing off the ground, uh, and then started building more. So, but here's what, you know, what's, what's entailed in this guy. Basically, I found a matching control plate and bridge that had some really nice uh, decorative work. Um, I actually went off the off the, the rails a little bit on the controls. I put the pickup switching in the back because I saw a couple of guys doing that. Um, volume, tone, pickup control in that way. Because if you're not really switching back and forth, you're doing more volume knob work, less selecting pickups, this control layout makes a lot more sense to you. And then uh, it was originally, like you saw, it was originally a um, single coil neck pickup. I routed the thing out for a humbucker and then actually ultimately put in a uh, filter tron. Um, and then I changed the neck out to a Warmoth neck um, because they, they make the radiuses I like, they also make the frets that I like. So this is what I ended up with. And someday I will finish this guy. <laughs> um, but it started, it started the process, really started the process. So then I built another and then another, and then another, and then another, and then another, and another, and another, and another, and another, and another, and another. Second guitar I put together. So not really a complete build. This is actually a Squire Tele Deluxe, I believe. Unless they're custom. I forget which one the single one. Anyway, so this is a Squire body. Uh, redid the electronics completely. Put in a, a Lawler um, vintage style uh, tele pickup. This is a Lawler wide range humbucker. It sounds amazing. Um, put a warmth neck on it. Um, vintage tuners. So this is number two. This is the second one I built. Very happy with this one. And you know, the path to building, the, the easiest path is to get a body that's already kind of finished and done and you just need to do the other pieces too. All right, so here's guitar number three. Now this one is a uh, warmth body, warmth neck. Uh, the body's a roasted body, so it's pretty light. It doesn't really need to be finished, but I'm gonna eventually put an oil finish on this guy. So this is kind of my roasted Cabernita. So two, uh, two power trons, and then instead of doing the usual switch where you switch between the pickups, I actually have two volumes, no tone knob. That way I can, Usually I wide open the bridge pickup, get that bite going, and then I back off the neck pickup to take some of the bass out and kind of find that sweet spot. So did a different type of a, a bridge here. I actually really like this bridge, really smooth, like the palm mute. 
Um, but I found myself a, a wood pickguard for it and off and running. This actually has uh, my favorite tuning keys on it. If you look at those, those are hip shots. So there's a UMT system. So basically, you don't have to drill into the headstock at all. So these actually go into a bracket and the bracket keeps them from spinning. And then obviously the nuts in the front keep keep this guy from, from popping out. Plus they're, they're lockers. So you can go ahead and leave a, leave a wrap, put it in there, lock it in place and make string changing pretty easy. But uh, yeah, that's this guy. So this was the, one of the, probably the first more high-end guitar I built. Um, this one is a, again, Warmoth, but Koa body, gloss finish. Uh, Warmoth Koa neck too with abalone inlays. So I actually really splurged on the hard work. Look at it, it's really nice and engraved. Knobs, bridge plate. And then uh, same thing with the back, engraved there. And even the tuners are engraved. But this is nice Koa wood, the whole thing. I'm kind of a nut for Koa. Oh yeah, I broke a string. So you're gonna see a missing for real here. Um, this one in particular has uh, P90. So this is a P90 neck, it's a Lindy Fralin. And then this is also a P90 in the bridge, which is also a Lindy Fralin. But just, just an awesome guitar. All right, so this is my beater. Um, but I love to play this thing. So this is actually a Squire body that I bought off a guy in Craigslist for a hundred bucks. Um, it was fully loaded too. <laughs> I did replace the hardware because I didn't like the hardware. But I mean, for a hundred bucks, I could go wrong. So I bought it a hundred bucks, um, grabbed the neck. Now this is an interesting neck. This is actually a Gibson scale conversion neck that one puts on. So this is actually as close to a Gibson as you could get being a Fender. Um, even actually, I put in two Gibson um, pickups that I pulled out of my, my, my ES335. So Gibson pickups, <laughs> Gibson scale, but just a joy to play. It's an awesome, awesome thing. Again, the hip shots. All right, so we're now in Stratland. So Strat was the first guitar I ever owned. Um, actually ended up selling it at some point in the future when I kind of went 100% bass. Um, but, you know, I think everybody needs to have at least one Strat. So this was basically a made in, ooh, I forget where this body was made. Another Stratosphere purchase. So this body was actually a body that they had from the 90s that I saw that was decently priced, so I picked it up. Um, got a pick guard, and you can notice this is actually reverse of what it should be. So this is kind of like the Jimi Hendrix reverse bridge pickup type of deal. So I got that, uh, new new electronics, and then these are all lipstick pickups I put in there. Um, kind of to do kind of a Stevie Ray Vaughan, most lonely voice type of thing. Or, you know, I, there's, there's a bunch of people that use that. And then just added another roasted, roasted Warmoth neck with uh, the frets and the radius LA. And again, the same, same tuners. All right, so continuing my slide into strangeness, I built this one. Um, so another one of those warmth bodies that I, because I cruise that site daily. And when I see a body that I go, that's, that's really cool. I ended up pretty much buying it. So here's another double humbucker. Um, this one I went and tried to do the reverse headstock thing. I'm really, the jury's not out on that one yet. I'm not sure I like this deal. <laughs> I may have to go with traditional and I've actually got my eye on a neck to replace this one that does that. But for now, um, this is what he is. So I believe uh, the pickups I put in this one, I believe I got from Stu Mac. These were actually their um, kind of PAF uh, style pickups. Um, I've got a couple of Lawlers. I just got low wines that I might put in here. I might put in one of the other ones. But uh, that's one of the beauties of doing this is you don't like it, change it. So I said before, I am a Koa nut. This is another Koa guitar. So Koa top, mahogany back, well, Koa neck. And I, I splurged with the, the pickup, or the, the hardware again, with all the great, the great, this crazy stuff. Um, the guy that pushed me over the edge, because I've been eyeballing this for a long time, was Robert Baker. He's, he said, you gotta do an Esquire. Everybody's gotta own at least one Esquire. And he's totally right. So if you look at this thing, um, you got a single pickup but you've got a three-way switch. So what is that? Why is there a three-way switch when you got a single pickup? There's no pickup to switch to. So in doing the wiring for this guy, one thing I learned about it is, you know, one position is gonna be with a fixed capacitor, so a fixed tone control, and then you just have your volume control. And it gives you kind of this cocked wah sound, which is really neat, it's really cool. Um, I believe that what I use is the Eldred mod. 
So the middle is normal volume, normal tone. And then the last is straight out, no volume, no tone, just whatever the pickup is and you're off and running. So really, really kind of a neat kind of control set. Uh, the pickup I used here is a Van Sant um, flat pole telly. Sounds, sounds amazing. But um, yeah, no, I'm like a Koa. I think it's Koa Kane is, is the phrase. Well, that's about a dozen guitars, not counting the bases that I built over there. I built a couple bases as well. You know, along that process, I learned a lot. Um, learned about what fret radiuses I like, what fret size I like, uh, what, are, what are the easiest tuning keys to, to put in without having to drill. Um, you know, what pickups I like. If you looked at all the all the, all the guitars I, I built, um, they're all different pickup configurations because I wanted to have all the tonal possibilities. So anything from you know, in the beginning, uh, Filtertron with a, with a Tele pickup, to double humbuckers, to uh, my actual standard Tele is actually a Fishman um, artist one. Um, lipsticks, um, all over the map, P90s. So, learned a lot about you know, the tones I wanted, did a lot of wiring, um, learned really but pretty much what hardware um, is easiest to deal with and the hardware I like. So, that way I really can fine tune the guitars the way I want them to be. A lot of the production guitars, you know, have some of the things you like, but they don't always hit that spot for you. So for me, this is the necks. I, the neck radiuses and the frets are what drives me um, insane about production guitars. But it's been a wonderful journey. I'm actually going to do, I'm going to continue to do more. And um, get a little bit of a teaser, I'll, uh, I'll show you what the next project looks like. So not all my builds are complete builds. Um, a lot of times if I find the body I like, I'll change the hardware, change some of the hardware, or change the neck or do something different. Um, so this one I found on Stratosphere, it's a Ventura. What I love about this is the Bigsby. So you get a body with all the hardware plus the Bigsby on top of that. So what I'm gonna do with this guy, and I've already got the, the neck and I got the lot pickups in the box down there, is I'm gonna make this a mini humbucker and throw a really hot tele, tele uh, pickup in the bridge. And then I've already kind of built the control plate a little bit. But you notice this is a single coil, so there's gonna be some routing involved in the next, uh, the next one I do. So I'll show what I do to do that, make the uh, mini humbucker fit, and wire it all up and uh, make it a nice player.